Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. In order to 100% power worlds, I'm gonna need to catch nearly every single creature on this island, build a productive factory of definitely willing participants, kill the five impossibly hard tower bosses, and not get sued by Nintendo. Gyarados! <gasps> Cinderace! Oh my god. It's your mom! And what started out as funny Pokemon game with guns turned into one of the most brutal and punishing grinds of my life. To get the final achievement in this game, I need to do countless attempts, multiple team builds, and played this game for more time than your grandma has left for the love of God, please call her. But we still have a while until we get there, as we start our journey as I do every morning, naked and wanting to change our bodies. Oh, the towers are the key. The tree holds the truth. My butt needs a what? oh, okay. Having woken up on this island with nothing, I head forward and activate this orange statue, turning it blue. These little statues will act as fast travel points across the map, so it's important I activate as many of them as possible. I pick some twigs off the ground and use them to craft a primitive workbench, which will allow me to craft some basic tools, like a pickaxe for mining, an axe for chopping, and a club for people in their early 30s to convince themselves they're still young. There was a Pokemon over there that I would like to see. <gasps> Wooloo! Oh my god, he's so cute. Should I punch him? Oh my god! No! No, I'm sorry, Wooloo! I'm sorry! No! Oh my god. Fighting a rampaging wild pal with your bands isn't the best idea. And yet I did it. But my nefarious sheep punching didn't just put me on PETA's most wanted list. It also gave me enough experience to put me at level 2, giving me a single stat point. You can put this point into different stats to give you more HP, increase your weight limit, your potency, your stamina, things like that. I'm going to wait until I understand what anything in this game means before I start spending my points willy-nilly. Now for reference, I'm playing on normal difficulty with no settings altered, which means you'll be getting the standard Power World experience here, meaning I'll be doing more grinding than the average burnout gifted kid will do before flunking out of college. But for now, the levels are coming quickly as I craft some tools, grab some resources, before unlocking the recipe for Pal Spheres, which when thrown, allow me to catch the wild Pokemon on this island. Come here. Come here. Get the heck over here. Ah, oh, crud. Oh, you're cornered now, baby. And I missed you. Okay, alright. Get the heck over here. Okay, now you're cornered. No, you can climb! God dang it. Get over here. Yes. Haha! -ha! I outsmarted you. Okay. Oh, wait. Is it dead? Wait, is it. Can I still catch. Oh. Oh, I killed it. Lesson learned! After crafting a couple more spheres, I weaken a lamb ball, making sure not to kill it, and then throw a Pokeball at it. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, get in the ball, bro. Oh, nice. Oh, what the? Don't think I should mesh with that guy. Unless... I did. He probably doesn't have any sort of projectiles. He does. He's shooting with a fiery sun. Okay. Uh, you know what, dude? You, you, you know what? I, okay, I... I see now I've made a mistake. Okay, okay. Oh, yep. He has all the power of the wind as well. Copy that. You know what? Um, dude, maybe we just go our separate ways, dude. Well, there's no way he's following me up here. Oh, he's following me up here. Handheld torches, brain up air. <laughs> Upon dying, you drop all of your items and equipment at the spot you dine out, so after just a short trek back, we get all of our stuff. It's now night, and at night, it gets cold, so I decided to build a fire to keep myself warm. And having leveled up three times now, I decided to put two points into stamina and one that'll increase my weight limit. I'm gonna put most of my skill points into these and HP throughout the series, as all the other stats are more useless than all those abandoned Discord servers you keep in a junk folder. I spend the night catching the other two pals around here, Katavia and Chickpea, before encountering the nighttime exclusive Pokemon Daydream. Whoa. Okay. Go, Chickpea! Attack! Attack! Attack this thing. Lambo manages to actually do something, but the Daydream's high level weakens him faster than my knees get when I see a picture of human Shrek, so I'm forced to finish the job myself. Okay, alright, how do we heal? Yes, managing your health is one of the most important parts of any Power World playthrough. So here's a short tutorial on ways you can heal in the game. That's the neat thing. You don't. 
And yeah, I stole this joke from a Reddit post. What are you gonna do? Put me in the next H-Bomber guy video? He already said he wasn't making another one. Daydream manages to weaken me down and I'm forced to retreat, teaching me my first big Pal World lesson. This game is not a walk in the park like your typical Pokemon game. I remember in Legends Arceus, I strolled right up to that level 40 Alpha Snorlax at level two, caught it, and called the rest of the game a cakewalk. Here in Pal World, if you're even just a few levels before your target, you'll get obliterated. It's about time to set up my base, so I placed on my Pal Box close to this blue tower from before. That way, I'll always have an easy fast travel back to my base. Only to realize that welding your base creates a fast travel point, and I could have set up somewhere where, I don't know, there aren't giant ruins blocking the entire area. But the other thing the Pal Box creates is a subtle transition to asking you to subscribe to the Shawnee Dude channel. I've blown tons of long post-commentary playthroughs, perfect for you to put on your second monitor, while you so desperately try to avoid even one single thought from entering your head. So if you're liking the video, please subscribe. Irregardless, I designed to work towards upgrading my now base, as that will allow me to have more pals out and working. Yes, not only do you get to torture, kill, and then force these monsters to attack their brethren, you also get to use them as free labor. And while one might think it's pretty bleak for this entire game to revolve around coming to a new island and enslaving the wildlife that live here, counterpoint, look how cute he looks with his little hammer. He yearns for the mines. To get the next base upgrade, we need to build a bed. Now, I initially thought this bed was for pals, not me, which is why I made this room look so prison-like, but I guess this is my house now, which feels like a well-deserved punishment for my crimes. I continue upgrading my base until a whore crate stumbles on by, and he does quite the number on me while I weaken him. I throw a pun of Pokeballs at the owl, and eventually one goes through and whore crates his mind, who is currently leagues above all my other pals. Most of the achievements for this game also involve catching a certain number of unique pals, with the highest being 90, meaning we're gonna wanna catch everything we see. After making some more base upgrades and upgrading our arsenal with a bow and a spear, head back out and catch some more pals. While it might seem redundant to catch multiples of the same pal, you get a sizable EXP bonus for each additional pal you catch, up to 10. And this is the single best way to level up in the entire game. So just like the scripts for my shorts, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be repeating, repeating myself a lot. Whoa, what's that over there? You see that blue thing, guys? Oh, shoot. Okay, can I make this jump? Kind of? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh no, I ran out of stamina! Oh god. Well, how- what do I- where do I go from here? Oh, I'm gonna die. Is is where I go from here. Ah. Thankfully, my stuff didn't stay in the water and I can easily retrieve it from this ledge. On my journey though, I end up finding this chest with great balls in it, a large damp egg, and some more wooloo. I bet we could catch that thing. I bet we can catch it. Be on your guard! Okay, we gotta dodge a little bit. Wait, I didn't, I didn't want to defeat it, man. Oh my God. But despite the accidental Nightwing kill, I do manage to catch some new pals in Pangolet and Gummoss before accidentally killing three more Pokemon. Oh my God, why is it so easy to accidentally do that? We do find a chest that has some pal souls in it, confirming that pals in this world do have souls. But when we die, we don't. And oh God, MatPat's already making a theory on it. I end up heading further down south where I find another fast travel point as well as a new spirit in Fox Spark, my first fire type pal. And fire is usually my favorite and Horcrates it. Oh my god, you're too strong, Horcrates. I need to I need to put you away. You're too strong. I unlock a nearby fast travel station and then head back to my base where I build the statue of power, where we can charge our crystals, I mean use pal souls to upgrade our pals. We can also use these little green statues I've been finding to upgrade our capture success rating. With all these level ups from our journey, I can finally craft some clothes, a paraglider, and a snarky quip that I need to make here because my videos are written like a crappy Taika Waititi movie. I also built a logging site that'll allow my Pokemon to gather wood by themselves, which is good because I've probably spent 30 minutes of the two hours I've played so far just getting more wood. And with that, it's time to head back out and continue catching more pals to grind up that EXP until I finally find a new one that's a full three levels higher than me. Whoa, Ethera deer. That's cool, I want it. I will capture it. Oh, I died, no! Lesson freaking learned. But I don't let that get me down and get right back to catching some new pals. Whoa, Eevee! Oh my god. I want an Eevee. Nice. What the heck? They're singing in the sky! Oh, it's one of those Nightwing things! Oh, I want it. Oh, oh great. We're gonna need some help. He got stuck on a tree! Now's our opportunity! Go, Horcrates! Horcrates is kind of bodying Nightwing. Then again, this thing's kind of bodying me. Run, 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 run! Okay, return. And then, oh no, this is gonna kill it. Oh no, thank God. This is my chance. Go! Ha. Oh, you missed! Oh my God. <gasps> oh, nailed it! 
Oh, nice. Cool. And we're not supposed to even have a Nightwing until around level 15. So not only was I feeling like we're kind of clutch for that, but his power is going to be huge compared to the average pal we encounter. But after a little more catching, I let an intrusive thought win. What if I hit this person? Okay. Uh-oh, I've been sodded. Spotted. Go! Oh my god, I didn't think this would actually work. Oh my god, there's guards? I gotta get the frick out of here. Horcrits defeated the skilled islander. What the heck are you doing over there? Oh, he's got a gun. Okay, we gotta run. We gotta run. We gotta go home. Yep, let's go home. Oh my god. I did not know that was like a thing. I'm wanted? I, I didn't- I did- I didn't do it on purpose. I'm sorry. How do I become unwanted? And the only way to become unwanted is to sit with you at lunch, you freaking loser! But actually, the only way I found is to just drop everything you moan and run at them news. Which is actually the same way you get rid of cops in real life. Trust me, I only have three felonies. But before I get into my experiences in jail, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. If you haven't heard of War Thunder before, just like when your dad was teaching you to drive, it's one of the most in-depth vehicle combat experiences ever made. The game's all about fighting in tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. Now, how many vehicles do you think this game's got? Maybe 50? 60? <laughs> <laughs> Try 2,500! And they've got everything from 1920s biplanes and armored cars all the way to fighter jets and battle tanks that we use today. Immerse yourself in the deep and thrilling combat of War Thunder where the realistic graphics of the detailed vehicles make you feel like you're really commanding some of the most powerful war machines throughout history. Join the worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic player versus player battles today by delving into the incredible experience of War Thunder. And the best part about it is that it's completely free now on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Xbox. So if you're a fan of military history looking to discover an unmatched wealth of high quality content, check out my link in the description or pinned comment and download War Thunder today. And if it's your first time playing or you haven't played in six months, that link will give you a massive completely free bonus pack containing multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium accounts. So make sure you check out my link below and download War Thunder today. And thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. After I respawn, I can upgrade my spear into a baseball bat. What's our bow gonna upgrade into a bubble blowing stick? I also put down a stone pit for our pals to mine stone while we're gone. I catch a bunch more pals, including a second Nightwing. When I get home, I make myself a crusher, which will allow us to convert our stone into valuable paldium fragments. A material required for many things, but most importantly, pokeballs. We also build a primitive furnace to start refining our ore into ingots, and then we go to craft the last thing we need for the base upgrade, a hot spring. But we're currently short on pal fluids? Is it pee? Is it sweat? Is it cum? On my quest to find more pal fluid, I start exploring further north, where I encounter the dreaded deer once again. But now I'm much better prepared with Nightwing, allowing me to easily whittle him down. Well, at least he was doing that, until a second one emerged from the woods, forcing Nightwing to retreat. Oh my god. That hurt. <gasps> Grookey! Uh oh, get back Nightwing. Okay. Who creates? Oh, why are you jumping on this? Oh god, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Who creates? We gotta go. What are you doing? That was cool. I didn't mean to do that, but it was cool. Go, who creates? Okay, you're you're done, you're done. Okay, we might actually be able to get this thing. Okay, and... No! That was mine! You jerk. There's a battle going on out here. Ah! Somebody killed the deer! I do manage to catch the grass monkey though, who will end up becoming invaluable at the base, as his childlike hands make him a perfect candidate for the mines. Yes! Okay, first achievement. Get 10 different types of pals. Easy. That's one out of 10 achievements down. Yeah, there's actually only 10 achievements in this game, but don't think that means this will be easy, brother. We still got 98 hours of footage left. I do finally manage to catch myself the mythical Ethereal Deer, and then am immediately killed by his brother. Fair enough. After retrieving my stuff, I make the discovery that catching and defeating water-type Pokemon are what give pal fluid. So I make sure to indoctrinate any pen gullets I see along the way. Then I spend the night, um, waking up some pals to be caught. What is this thing? Oh my god. Pikachu is not even safe. After catching the Pikachu, I unlock a new fast travel point, and this one's right next to one of the five towers, which holds Power World's first boss. So while we could technically take her on right now, seeing as we died to literal roadkill five minutes ago, I decided we should prep a little bit more first. Back at the base, a new influx of pals allows me to start accomplishing new tasks, like my water pals manning the crusher, my deer cutting down trees, and my Naruto manning the furnace. And the best part is they all like doing the free labor. They yearn for it, actually. What are you doing, slackers? Yeah, get back to the mines. Okay, bad working conditions. What are the bad working conditions? 
Feeling down because of bad working conditions. Oh well. You'll live. Finally, I unlocked the crafting recipe for the triple shot bow. So after having that made, I head back into the world. The POW world. Which funnily enough, is also what you're stuck in with your crush. Like, seriously, man, just take a hint. She just wants to be friends. Somebody just has a gun. Oh wait, Syndicate Thug, that's an actual, like, person? I thought it was a Pokemon. What's going on up here? What the heck are you guys doing? Oh my god, there's a whole base! Uh, alright, well, if you insist, I guess it can, can this thing attack humans? Oh my god, did, did I just kill that guy? Did I, did, uh, okay. I, I can't think about that for too long. But, but, oh, oh my god. Oh wait, they have this cute little guy trapped in here! Well now I don't feel bad. You guys are doing animal cruelty. I clear out the base and free the trapped pal, whose name turns out to be Floppy. I didn't realize that by freeing it I'd actually capture her, but that's a fun little added bonus, as she's probably my favorite design of all the Pokemon in this game so far. I continue exploring and find some new pals and capture them in Melpaka. Combat, who, is it just me, or does this thing look like they tried to make the Shadow the Hedgehog version of freaking Bubsy? Pilot license? What for? And some more whore crates, which I'm realizing now is definitely supposed to be a mix between who and Socrates, but I said whore crates this entire playthrough, so I'm sticking to it, man. After grinding all that EXP last night, I finally feel ready to take on the game's first boss. So I head to Rain Syndicate Tower and join the fight. Oh my god, Totoro's in this? Oh my god, it's starting. Go, Nightwing! Oh wait, maybe Nightwing won't be the best move here. Actually, I don't know. Go, Nightwing! Get back! Uh-oh. Oh. He's gonna go through. Okay. Go, Nightwing! I don't care if our deer is slacking off. He can do whatever the hell he wants right now. Okay, I'm taking mad damage. We gotta go. Okay, that did a lot of damage. Let's be conscious of that. We only have 10 minutes to do this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That hurt. That really hurt. I'm shocked. All right, Nightwing, you're not doing the best, I'm gonna be honest. I think you'll do better, who creates? You immediately got hit, okay. Okay, I did not know what I was getting into, clearly. Who creates, are you doing anything? No, you're way too slow for this, okay. Understood. Nightwing, it's all you. What's going, holy crap! Where is Nightwing? Oh, Nightwing died! Uh-oh, spark it, go! Oh my god, okay, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die today. My god, this guy's no joke. And I got no more arrows left. Run! Oh yeah, okay, I'm dead. Okay, I got it, yep, got it, got it. Yeah, I wasn't even close. We were doing okay damage with Nightwing, but the second he died, we did not stand a chance. I'm gonna have to get a ton stronger before visiting my neighbor and the Tumblr girl again. Which means back to catching and grinding. But luckily, very soon, I find a brand new type of pal. What the heck? What's going on? It exploded! Uh oh. Oh no! Get away from him! Oh my god, that is absurd. That is actually absurd. What the heck? Okay, lesson number 47 of Power World, don't go near the dodos. Upon arriving back home, I've unlocked a new item called the Meat Cleaver. And unsure what it does, I decide to test it out. Butcher gum moss. Oh my god! No, gum moss! Oh my god, the horror. Oh my god, why I feel terrible about doing that. I'm gonna do it again though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to do this. This is a great way to get extra resources out of all those extra pals I had to catch, and also, it's funny. I grind on some more ore and then discover that Bubsy has a special ability that allows you to see all the different pile types in the immediate area. Which is extremely useful for not only tracking down new pals, but also hitting my 10 pal catches for each type. This allows me to find some more deer and then kill them to get the horns I need for the deer's saddle. <gasps> yes! Oh, this is awesome. This is gonna get getting around so much easier. Oh, no, no, no! Yes, like I said before, every pal in this game actually has a special ability. And some of those abilities are the power to use the pal as a rideable mount. Having my own rideable deer makes getting around and catching pals much faster, so I'm able to level up way quicker. These levels give me the confidence I need to take on the giant mammoth once again, who kills my deer in one shot, and I'm forced to retreat into a cave to survive. This introduces another huge mechanic of pal world, dungeons. Dungeons are like little areas, usually guarded by some strong armored guards, that hold good resources like ore, coal, and paldium fragments. They also usually 
usually have some rare pals, like in this case, the brand new pal, Maul, who is probably the ugliest pal in this entire game. The end of the cave has you do a boss fight with what's called an alpha pal. And let me explain what that means for my fellow Omegas out here. These pals serve as a little mini boss around the map and in dungeons. They're way larger and way stronger than their normal versions. In this case, I go up against an alpha Joltov, which actually goes pretty well as I've learned Power World's secret technique that basically busts this game wide open. Yeah, by clicking control, you can do a dodge roll. And this discovery makes dodging attacks much easier. But what made this fight even easier was the fact that Jolta got stuck in the floor midway through the fight, so I could easily kill him. For defeating the electric prick, I'm awarded with some rare ancient civilization parts. And then from the two guarded chest, I get rubies to sell and an attack pendant, which will raise my attack. That experience pushed me to level 16 and unlocks the recipe for the high quality workbench, allowing me to start make upgraded tools using ingots like a metal pickaxe, metal axe, and a metal spear. With my new equipment, stronger pals, and higher level, I finally feel ready once again to take on the tower boss. I'm hungry. Oh god, okay. This time Nightwing's higher level combined with my triple shot bow are doing way better damage. Not to mention me learning how to roll lets me dodge way more of Grizzbolt's attacks. I even try letting my other pals fight for a bit. Oh my god, Floppy, you suck. Okay, lesson learned. But even though I'm still doing good damage, Grizzbolt's attacks pack a punch. But I'm spamming, I'm spamming roll. How do I not win? And to make matters worse, my ace Nightwing is nearly dead, so I have to send out the much weaker Bubsy. But despite his less impressive stats, Bubsy actually does an amazing job of distracting Grizzbolt while I'm able to wail on him with my bow. Tom Bat, if you take one more hit, I'm gonna call you back. Oh my god, Tom Bat, you're bodying him! Come on, Bubsy! Bubsy, get back! Okay. Oh my god, we got him! Let's go! Oh, we got an achievement for that! Let's go! Acquired five ancient technology points. Yo! Get bunked! So this ancient technology points gives me an egg incubator. Small feedback. Unlocks of food. Players and pals automatically consume food when you're hungry. Oh! Grappling gun! What the frick? What is this? Pal Essence Condenser. Combine several pals of the same type to create a higher rank version? What? With one of the five tower bosses now defeated, I decide to paraglide off the tower into this new autumn looking area, only to realize I don't have nearly enough stamina and quickly fall to the earth. But it does lead to me discovering a new pal type. <gasps> what the f- what the fwack? You guys get it? Like the potty word fuck. I do have a pretty strange realization while trying to catch my next fwack though. Wait, what? Wait, what? What's in there? Wait, what? The guy was in the ball? What? What? Syndicate thug escaped the sphere. What? Huh? What the fwack? After exploring a bit more, I happen upon my very first town. Here, there are tons of people to talk to, but most importantly, greedy merchants who want to take our gold. There are two different types of these merchants in town. The first sells basic supplies, like spheres, arrows, your mom's underwear, leather, basic stuff. The second sells specific pals to you, and will even allow you to sell some of your pals to him for money. Which is a cool feature, and that's it. And definitely doesn't imply that this world has a pal trafficking ring, and all these creatures live in constant misery. There's also a dungeon right at the mouth of town, and get used to this place, because we'll be coming inside here very frequently. Must resist urge to make joke. Uh. Inside, we find a new Pokemon called Killamari. And then we make our way to the Alpha Gum Moss at the end, who gets stuck inside a wall, forcing me to leave. Back home, I craft myself a small feed bag, which means that me and my partner pals will eat automatically when we're hungry, which is so convenient. I didn't really talk about it, but hunger and food is a really annoying part of this game. What? What? What, what, are, you, what are you talking about? What, what, what do you mean a raid? Okay. Um, that doesn't sound very good. Oh my god, Tansy is glitching and is eating all my red berries, besides the point. Where are these man-eating what? Where are these guys? No, where are the bad guys? I don't see them. Oh, did we kill them already? Did we kill them in like two seconds? Yes, raids will periodically attack the base as we go through the game, and they get progressively harder each time they come. Kind of like the police interrogation questions on why my ex-wife has gone missing. I unlock the recipe for the crossbow, which fires less often, but does way more damage. So I make it my new primary weapon. I also take this time to add some general improvements to my base, like building an egg incubator to start incubating those eggs I found, a sphere crafting bench to craft better spheres, and a cooler to keep my food from spoiling for longer. These advancements allow me to upgrade my base to level 10, and give me the ability to create a second base, which will come in handy later 
wrong. I hatch two eggs and hang you in Flame Bell, giving me the achievement for catching 20 unique pounds. After that, I head into a dungeon and easily take out an Alpha Male Paco. I finally have the materials for Nightwing Saddle, allowing me to fly. Flight is probably the single most useful skill while unlocking the entire game, as this map is massive and we need to explore all of it. I fly to a brand new island where I catch a Mantine, gross British juice, Pumba, and this homestuck OC, before flying over north and finding the windswept hills. Here I'll find a grass squirrel and continue getting to my 10 captures for each pal before finding... What is that? Oh my god, I want that so bad. What is that? What the heck? King Paka. Okay, I'm gonna try for it. First, let's get these guys out of the way. My shield. Okay. Okay, I need to get rid of these little guys first. Okay, alright. We're not ready for this. Let's go, Nightwing. Nightwing, let's get out of here. Okay, we were definitely... King Paka was a lot... Yep, okay. And King Paka killed us. <laughs> That was crazy! But to alleviate the sorrow of dying, our water egg hatches soon after. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Hen King? That seems cool. I mean, let's put him on the team. He looks pretty cool, right? And while I just threw him on the team because he looks pretty cool, Hen King is going to become one of our most trusted pals. Our right hand man, our chief commander in this world of pals. But with that, it's back to more catching, and I grab this pal that I am very afraid to search on DeviantArt. The exploding bird, and oh yeah, did I mention Hang use our paraglider now? Because he is. No further explanation needed. We come across our first dragon type pal as well in Dinosaur. And even though we only have an 8% chance of catching it after spamming pal spheres. Oh wow. Nice. Soon after, I find an overworld alpha that's also a dragon type in Chilet, but my insistence to try and catch it leads to, well... We need a second to recover. Hold on, give us a couple seconds. Okay, hey, it's only fair if you actually give us a couple seconds. It's actually only fair- okay, you didn't act- that, that, that's actually not- you're actually not playing by the rules. Wait, what? I killed- oh my god, the- the, the freaking- it must have killed it after I- after I died. After a bit more grinding, I actually end up completing one of my first PAL goals as I catch my 10th Tansy. This means I'm running out of Pokemon to catch here, so I gotta start heading north, and doing so has me encounter a new phase. The Black Marketeer. Oh, okay, this guy seems cool. What the freak, he is haunted. What's up, buddy? I trade any kind of PAL, whether it's stolen or even prohibited types. Take a look. What? Whoa! Gale Claw. I mean, I want Warsect. He seems cool. But I can I just simply cannot afford him. Lucky for me, the fuddler he was selling is right inside this dungeon, which I grab a few of. At the end of this is Alpha Ruby that I attempt to catch, but take a good amount of damage and retreat and- Oh my god, it's following me! Please stop, 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 please leave me alone! After healing up, I rejoin the battle, but something's different now. It changed? What? Or am I in a different place? What? What? Not sure why it changed, but irregardless, we're able to take it out and conquer the dungeon. But with our higher level squad, I decided it's time to take back to the site of the King Paka failure and redeem ourselves. And despite our new power, he swiftly takes out Nightwing and my big deer too, my two strongest pals. But then, just when all hope is lost, it's time to send in the king, who is the absolute hero of this fight. I mean, he does absurd damage, freezes King Paka for seconds at a time, and just look at how he dives head first. A true honorable comrade giving his life for the catch. But even with the legend that is Pen King helping, he soon dies too. And we're on to our last pal. But with a couple of lucky crossbow shots, we're able to get him down to just 18 health. Though even with that, we still only have a 0.43% chance to catch it. So we throw sphere after sphere after sphere until finally... <gasps> what? <laughs> Then, while exploring, I find the abandoned mine shaft and decide to head in. Only problem was that I didn't have a torch and it's pitch black in there. So that led to... I don't know what's going on. I can't see anything. What's going on? I can't see anything. I mean, this is helping at least. Oh, whoa. Oh, it's a black marketeer. Whoa! Jolt Hog Christ. This seems good. Let's take it. Why not? And despite the journey being absurdly frustrating, it was all more than worth it. As Mariath will soon become one of the cornerstone pals of this run. Because this thing is good. Like, 
really good. Upon arriving home, I finally have enough resources to make the PAL condensation machine. And the way this works is you can sacrifice a certain number of PALs into a target PAL to not only give it EXP and some stat increases, but also make whatever its special ability is more powerful. It starts off with just needing to throw in four, but ramps up to 16 or even 32 PALs per condensation. I decided to upgrade my Tia font as her ability is the only source of healing in the entire game. So I figured she could serve as a good utility PAL. I've also gotten enough ore now to upgrade my armor to metal armor. This gives me the confidence to head into a brand new area up north where the Pokemon are much tougher than the ones we've been dealing with and should help us conquer the second tower. I weaken this level 18 Gale Claw to just a sliver of HP, but even still, I only have a 1% capture rate. How? After many, many balls thrown, I end up catching it, but this set the tone for how the rest of this section would be. You know that part in a survival game where you've conquered your first task and in order to keep getting stronger, you need to head into a new area, but the enemies are too tough there, so you need to get better equipment, but the only way to get that better equipment is to go to the new area? Tail more ancient than your mom? That's what happens here as I proceed to slam my head into the wall trying to progress here for hours with death after death after death. And even if I manage to weaken an enemy, I shred through tens of pal spheres and don't even catch it. I knew that if I wanted to make any progress here, it was time to gear up. The first hurdle I needed to cross was my lack of ingots. Ingots, besides for some reason sounding like a slur, are the main premium resource in pal world. Their clusters are somewhat uncommon, but even if you do find a big outbreak of them like I did here, the ore is so heavy that you can only carry a few pieces at a time. So that just means means it making trip after trip after trip, but eventually I have a good amount of ore and craft a Mariah's saddle, giving me a much stronger and more importantly, faster mount. Next, I bought a ton of regular pal spheres off the merchant and used them to grind levels back in the early areas. It also leads to me seeing some pals I might've missed, like Depresso, who like, okay, he's half coffee, half depression. Who made this guy like some millennial? My doggo has so much Depresso, it never does zoomies no more. <laughs> In these areas, I make sure to run through every dungeon I see, picking up as many palladium fragments as I can. These fragments combined with the ingots I'm refining will allow me to start making mega spheres, a considerable upgrade from pal spheres. And you know, I don't know if I'm more offended that they kept the Pokeball progression color system in this game exactly the same as it is in Pokemon, or relieved because any other way I would continually confuse it. While I'm doing all this prep, I happen to get raided by a strange group. Fangirls who can't contain their love. Frick does that mean? What the heck is that? What the actual sh what am I looking at? What what am I looking at right now? I, I mean I kind of have to catch it. That's part of the ch the thing. That part of what we're doing here, but oh okay, they all died. My god. This thing is gross. What the hell is it? I hate it. I think the funniest part about this abomination is that I know the internet. And despite Pocket Pair trying to throw some giant cans on this thing and make some weird sexy Pokemon, no one's gonna care about this thing. It looks like the freaking Pokemon map pad made for Markiplier. No, they're gonna be making art about, I don't know, like the freaking chicken or something. Watch. Pal world fan art. <laughs> 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 I, I was joking. I was making st I hate I hate this place. I end up making some ultra spheres as well and get all the way up to level 26. And with that, just three hours later, it's time to tackle the bone zone once again. And this time things go much smoother. I'm able to catch some more floppy, Marvin the Martian, this butterfly, and this weird grass woman that I feel like my friend Adrian would like a little too much. Another thing that helps traverse through the area is going at night. During the day, so many Pokemon spawn in these huge packs, but at night you can just wake them up from their sleep and take them out one by one. Rath's fire attacks also help greatly since this is an entirely grass area. Oh yeah, there are like types of this game and every single type has one other type that it does double damage to. Like electric beats water, ground beats electric, you get the point. But for some reason, fire is the only exception to this because it beats both grass and ice. So I guess fire of all things is the best type in the game, which is a large reason that Mariath is so good. Except Mariath actually isn't a fire type. It's just covered in fire, learns fire moves, and has literal flame wings, but I digress. I do end up dying to a pack of Martians as their snipe attacks still pack a punch even with all our improvements. After getting all our stuff back, I happen upon a moth that doesn't look quite like all of the other moths around here. What's that? Why is that one glowing? What's special about him? What's special about him? Yes, this is this game's equivalent to shiny Pokemon called Lucky that are both four times larger and have a perk that makes them hit 15% harder. And am I the only one who just finds it hilarious that they made them just actually shine? It's like someone at Pocket Bear was like, we gotta have shiny Pokemons in this game. And no one in the room bothered to bing what they meant, so they just kind of went with their gut. <laughs> Despite my jokes, this thing absolutely annihilates me. Just 
literally embarrasses me. But after getting my stuff, I try a nearby boss named Patalia, and while this thing also beats me on the first attempt, on attempt two, I'm able to accidentally kill it while trying to catch it. Apparently, these overworld alphas respawn after an hour, so I'll be back for her later. I'm in desperate need of some more cloth for my next base upgrade, which you can luckily buy at the merchant. So in order to afford all that I need, I'm gonna make like Logan Paul and sell some animals that love me to someone I barely know. I actually decide to get rid of these Noah's Ark style and only keep one boy and one girl of each species. That way, if I need more, I can always breathe them. After getting the cloth, I need to build two much nicer beds and grab my base upgrade. I decide to head back into the dungeons as we're gonna need tons of ore for the next wave of upgrades, and along the way, I make a shocking revelation. Yeah. <gasps> oh my god i i don't know i don't want to think about the ethics of this or what this means for me that that's horrifying and not only can i capture him once i get back to my base i can put him to work can he start can i put him to work right should i put him to work oh my god this is horrifying. Oh no. <laughs> what have I done? Can he do anything? No, just transport goods. Okay. All right. All right. I don't want to think about that for too long. I end up renaming him Jerry, but all Jerry can really do is make handgun ammo. And while I thought he'd be pretty good at that, since, you know, he's a human and all, he's actually slower than pretty much every other pal I have. Not to mention, I get near constant messages about him taking a break. Like, oh my god, Jerry, no wonder no one has come looking for you. I end up finding a new island south of mine that's filled with mostly lower level enemies again, but does have some unique sights, like easy access to Robbie's, which I only had one of, and this Joltog Chris trapped in a syndicate base. Joltog Chris is the first of many alternate form pals we'll see, where they look similar similar to an existing PAL, but are a completely different type. In this case, this Joltog is ice type. This island is also overrun with the mammoth that rocked our world at the beginning of this playthrough, so I decide it's time to finally engage. It's sleeping. Now might just be the time to strike. Go! Oh my god, we're getting him. We're actually getting him. Oh my god! You freak! I will destroy you! And this will be my grass type. I've been looking for one. But despite getting him shockingly low, all 13 of my mega spheres fail and I'm forced to kill him. Even though I can't catch them, they do drop high quality pal oil, which I've been needing for quite a while, so... I run into this bronze cherry, but unfortunately you're unable to throw pal spheres at it, so I have to kill it. But on the bright side, I managed to find a new pal, Ribbunny. Freaking gumball looking character. I also discover a brand new area that looks completely different than everywhere else I've explored before. Mount Obsidian. Cool. It's hot here. I see. I see. Oh, okay. I'm like steaming hot. Oh my god. I, didn't, I thought it was like going to be a little hot. I'm steaming. All right. Let's get out of here. You can't fly above it. All right. We need fire armor for that. Understood about Mount Obsidian. It's the Breath of the Wild Goron area. Oh, there's a, there's an egg there. <gasps> Finally, a fast travel point. Oh my god. Okay. That's so nice, holy crap. I end up finding a fast travel point and make the trek to Goron City my new goal, which means it's time to do a slew of upgrades. Make the max, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what we need. With all our new spheres, we can finally go back to Mamre's Island and chuck balls at him until... Yeah. Come on. <gasps> okay, okay, we hit that. Yes! And we got the freaking Mamo Rest. Having a Pokemon this powerful is going to be a gigantic help in upping our power level, which shows itself almost immediately as he helps immensely in whittling down this level 31 Alpha Univolt I found. And I don't really know how to express this without sounding like a seven-year-old boy who thinks he just got the world's fastest Hot Wheels, so I'm just gonna lean into it. Look how cool this is! They're like these giant monsters and they're fighting! It's like Godzilla versus Kong in real life! They're like... Okay, I'm done. Just had to get that out of my system, sorry. Mamre's weakening Univolt allows me to swoop in and catch it, further building out our squad of powerhouses. Then it was time to start grinding out as much ore as we can, because these weapon and armor upgrades are getting expensive, man. But I found a little trick to make gathering it much easier. You see, like I said before, the biggest problem with mining for ore is that despite putting tons of skill points into weight, I can still barely hold one rock. But I found this huge clump of ore that respawns right next to the church fast travel point. From here, I can go through and mine out every single rock, then take them in trips,
traps and drop them in front of the fast travel point. Then once I've gotten all of the ore, I can pick them all up and fast travel back to base. This hugely speeds up my ore gathering as every trip here garners me around 200 ore. And the rocks respawn every hour, so... How many bars will we get? How many bars will we get? Oh my god, 164. That is nice. These ingots allow me to make a huge artillery upgrade, going from the measly crossbow to a handgun. Yes, halfway through this video and we're just getting our gun in the Pokemon with Guns game. Call me DiGiorno's because I truly did not deliver. But also, call me Annie because I got my gun. But also call me... Uh, uh, never mind. To make ammo for my handgun, I need to make gunpowder, which is two parts charcoal, which we can get from cooking wood in a furnace, and one part sulfur, which is a rock found around the world that we found very few of so far. So call me a Hollywood actor, because I won't be shooting until I get my special rock. Yes, I knew I had one more in me. I also make a hip lantern that'll automatically provide light whenever I enter a dark area, which will prevent things like the mineshaft incident from happening again. I go out and attempt to add another stronger member to our team as I enter a fight with the highest level enemy I've fought yet. What the frick is that? Oh my god, it just did so much damage. This thing is cool, man. I want this. Is this an ice type? Oh no, it's neutral type. Oh my god. Oh, you're stuck in the wall, Nightwing. Go. I was like, why isn't he doing anything? Go. Memorist. Oh my god, Memorist is bodying her. Oh shoot, that was a wallop. She's getting close. Oh no, that didn't feel good. That felt quite bad. All right, get back. Oh, come on, we were so close, it was 57 health. Oh, darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Not sure why I respond to that like a full house character whose crush just asked someone else to the dance, but irregardless, I head back and this time things go a lot better. Watch how much damage we're doing. Get back, okay. No, why did you die? No, dang it. Damn, no, the stupid fire killed you. No. Oh, no. Dang it, I wanted to catch that thing so bad. Okay, I'll have to come back. In the meantime, I realize that most dungeons have at least one sulfur rock, so I'm able to make a bunch of gunpowder that I can then turn into 200 bullets for my pistol. I head back to where I found the Brawn Cherry and capture her, as well as this Ghost Eevee. Nope, Marath killed it. Awesome. But I do manage to capture an Alpha Pringles Man, as well as his little minions, which are somehow completely different Pokemon. The rare catch train doesn't stop there, though, as I encounter a shiny, I'm sorry, Lucky Ribbony, which is actually pretty nice because being shiny increases your work speed by 15, and Ribbony can do most tasks that need to be done around the base. Fine. Finally, I make myself some heat-resistant metal armor, perfectly equipping me for the heat of Death Mountain and head on back there. And while this was only a few short minutes of work for you guys, for me, it was six hours, as I approach hour 18 of my playthrough. So after all that grinding, I am beyond excited to explore this mountain. Brothers of the Empire Martyr? What the heck is this? Are these guys supposed to be bad guys? They're not doing anything. Oh my god! And, oh my god. Whoa, what is that? Get out of here, get out of here. Get out of here, get out of here, stat. Okay, how do we how do we leave? How do we leave immediately? Oh my god. This place is brutal. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. God damn it! Oh my god, I lasted like five seconds there. Alright. But since we died, we've got to go back and retrieve our stuff from the mountain. Only problem is, I was wearing my only heatproof clothing I had when I died. And I tried just YOLOing it naked, but I don't even get close before I'm on death's door. So I go back to my base and make some heat-resistant fabric clothing, and then go back to the mountain to pick up my stuff. Okay, now we can tackle this place. But as I traverse, I realize that the preparations I had done might not have been enough for this place. 2%, jeez. Even to just catch these two flame bells, which are supposed to be these little freaking easy baby pals of the area, I go through 30 mega spheres. Nearly half of my sphere has gone to these two sniffling little candles. Though on the flip side, I managed to catch this cool flame horse in just one ball. Oh? Oh, Riley's Auto Parts, baby! And as cool as this thing looks, it's a little hard to take it seriously when it looks like the horse OC I would make when I was like five years old. Um, he's all black and he's there's flames coming off him because he's so strong and he's got flames coming out of his nose and his name is Shadowbringer. And regardless, things don't go so smoothly on our next encounter as we get the pulp beaten out of us and are forced to retreat and hide inside of a nearby cave. Phew, at least we should be safe here. Oh, uh, what the heck is this? 
Oh. All right, so we're good. We're running. At night, there are knocked versions of all the normal enemies running around, which are really cool. But sadly, I end up knocking most of them out, though I do manage to catch this Van Mir. But on the whole, I'm way too underleveled for this place, so I decide to just activate the fast travel point and leave. With my tail between my legs, I opt to start exploring the rest of the grassland islands on the map, hoping to find more alphas to fill out my team and give me a better survival chance. I find and catch this cat witch, this evil spirit cat who is somehow a neutral type and not a dark type, and this electric panda who's really high leveled compared to my Team. But the raw power of our memories let us easily truck through. And despite having a 0.42 catch rate, I actually catch it on my first ball, which was really cool. I find the black market guy again, and after selling off my excess pals, I buy a war sack. He costs a whopping 17,000 gold, but luckily I have enough. Oh, oh my god, when did I get so much money? As I head further north, I start encountering completely new pals like Monsanto, Arsox, and Blixen. I have no idea why they started naming these things like Santa's reindeers. Pro tip for anyone playing along grab yourself a ton of Blixen. Most pals who are good at fire type task can pretty much only do that but because of blixen's furry bait design she's also a really good crafter and transporter allowing her to do a lot more around the base once she's finished refining finally i find a level 35 alpha verdash and okay i've been making pokemon jokes this whole video but this is the first one that i'm actually like like uh, come on, this is the same freaking thing. Like, how many monsters got flared shin guards? Irregardless, this thing's actually pretty good for factors not listed in the stats page. You see, while things like attack and defense are really important to a pal's performance, that's not all that's important. Since the battles take place in a 3D space, being small enough to aim your attacks and quick enough to dodge other attacks is actually pretty important. Not to mention it prevents getting stuck on the various set pieces in the environment. Unfortunately for me, I go through 12 megaspheres and 1 gigasphere unable to catch it. So similar to my dad, before he left for milk 16 years ago, I'm definitely gonna come back later. I do manage to catch this bee guard though, pushing me to level 33. Yeah, the levels are coming a lot slower now as the required amount of experience has massively increased for each level. But while looking for some more pal oil, I managed to find something incredible. Oh my god, it's a big glam ball. It's so massive. What the heck? Nice. I've also further optimized my ore gathering ritual as I've unlocked a saddle for Mamory, whose special ability means that he can mine ore more efficiently while being ridden. This takes me a while to figure out since there's no mine ore button, but I realize what they mean is to use your attacks and just absolutely pulverize these rocks. Like, I don't know much about mining, but there's gotta be a better way of doing this than just dropping a nuke on the rock. Irregardless, the improved efficiency moves me up to around 320 ore per trip and a good amount of wood as well. I'll be making this trip with Mamory's pretty much every day from now on, as the next thing I need to build, the production assembly line costs a whopping 100 ingots. Combined with the new tier of balls I need to craft also requiring multiple ingots, we're gonna need mountains of ore. While all that's smelting though, I go back and catch myself the Lunaris, who's a neutral type that can learn tons of different coverage moves, making her super versatile. Let me just search what the best moveset is for her and oh my god, please do not google her. With all the ore smelted, I build my sphere assembly line. This allows you to craft higher tier spheres, as well as craft them at a faster pace. But you also need a generator, powered by an electric pal to fuel it. Speaking of, I found a desert up in the northeast of the map that's completely populated by electric types. There's gotta be new Pokemon around here. Oh my god, what? Why is this- Oh, it's a Dinosaur Lux. Let's see, a Rayhound. Interesting. But the pals here are even higher level than the ones in the volcano, and they all quickly drain me of all my shiny new pal spheres. In fact, I spend so long sitting here throwing balls that it turns night, where it apparently gets freezing cold in the desert. So without any sort of cold resistance armor, I die. After retrieving my stuff, I try exploring around here for a bit longer, but just like the time I accidentally stumbled into the adults-only anime expo section, I could tell pretty quickly I don't belong here. Upon arriving home, I realize that Jerry is slacking off again! So it's time to do the unthinkable. All right, Jerry, you've had your time in the sun, and I'm sure you've had a lot of fun. But now, you've been slacking, I hear you're depressed, you have an injury. Jerry, it's been nice knowing you while we did. Jerry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jerry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You needed to be taken out. After replacing Jerry with the lizard with jugs, I was feeling a lot stronger, especially because my Lunaris has a whopping 409 attack. So I decided to go check in on the tower boss that I found in the desert. Whoa, who is this guy? What the frick? Ordered an Xbox controller. Whoa. He did the One Piece thing. What the heck is it? 
Marcus and Flarius. Cool. Oh, oh my god, it's a hundred thousand HP. Oh my god. Go, Lorenus. Okay. This seems quite bad. Oh my god, I'm gonna melt mega die. I don't think we could do this in ten hundred minutes. Alright, I should just die. No way I'm beating that. So it turns out that is supposed to be the second to last tower boss in the entire game, so I won't be coming back here for a while. But back at the base, I go to make the production assembly line too, which is supposed to help me start mass producing my basic craftable items. I've gotten so many levels that I decide to skip the first production line altogether and go straight to production line too, which should be the upgraded version, right? But when I go to craft there, it's missing tons of items that I should be able to craft at production assembly line one. So what gives? And also when I check my base upgrade, despite having already built it, it says that I have and this is actually due to a translation error that occurred on the game's release. What I just built was actually not the production assembly line 2 at all. It was actually the weapons assembly line. The real production assembly line 2 won't be unlocked until much later in the game. Now, this actually has been fixed in the game's most recent patch. However, most of my playthrough happened on the days right after launch, so I won't realize this in game for a very long time. I explore around the desert a bit more and manage to find myself my second ever town. And the merchants here supply even better stuff than the small settlement does, like megaspheres and bullets, which is convenient as currently bullets are still a complete pain to craft. That night, I get the idea to unlock the teleport to the very last two towers, even though I know I can't take them on yet. At this point in the playthrough, I kind of just thought I'd be able to bang out the last three towers out together after a little grinding, but oh my gosh, how wrong I was. But the last tower lie on top of this gigantic mountain, and if you're wondering how I was able to get up there, it's because I found a little exploit that allows you to climb anything you want. First, you just hop on your flying pal and fly up as high as you can before its stamina wears out. Then you just dismount from your pal and grip onto the wall. Then you use all of your stamina climbing the wall, and by the time you're done, your pal will have all of its stamina back and you can go back to remounting it. Rinse and repeat until you've gotten wherever you want to go. On top of the first peak, I find a completely new type of ore called pure quartz. I have no idea what it does yet, but I'm sure it'll be important. Five memories mine out the whole rock. And speaking of memories, I find his stronger ice type counterpart up in the mountains. And despite being a full 10 levels lower than him, we're able to whittle him down pretty easily with our all-star Lunaris and my handgun. However, when it comes to catching it, I go through a full 50 gigaspheres trying to catch this thing. Five, zero, and no luck. This single defeat breaks my spirit and causes me to literally never come back to the ice area again. I explored pretty much the entirety of every other area in full, but here in the snow, all I can think about is the stupid mammoth. I'm so glad the asteroid wiped you jerks out. I managed to find both towers in the two respective snow biomes. One is the second boss you should be fighting, and one is the very last boss in the game. So sure hope I never mix those up. I get to the tower and fast travel the heck out of there. To combat anything like that happening again, I make sure to stop recycling, which will lead to the quicker melting of polar ice caps and the death of all memory Chris. What I also do to combat this is start crafting the next tier of sphere up from gigaspheres, hyperspheres, which cost a whopping three ingots and three pal fragments to make. And with the next boss tower finally found, I decide to start prepping to take her on. And after crafting mountains upon mountains of handgun ammo, we start the fight. Oh, please be ice. No, this is a like grass. Why is she on the top of a snowy mountain then? Oh my god. Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! How is this a boss, pal? Isn't that the same thing that we fought like 10 hours ago? You're gonna tell me that these are two completely different Pokemon? You're gonna look at me and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? Irregardless of that, this is actually a pretty tough fight. I started with Mariah because I figure his fire type attacks will easily weaken Lylene. And while he does decent damage, he lasts all of about 30 seconds before dying. Yeah, Lylene has this pretty strong water bubble attack that just decimates him. Next, I send in Nightwing, whose ability to fight at a ranged distance lets him survive a lot longer, and by a lot longer, I mean a whole 45 seconds. So I send in Lunaris next. I also make the realization here that headshots actually do double damage, which I guess makes sense, but I never thought to do that because I rarely encounter scenarios where I must shoot a Pokemon with a gun. Lunaris ends up doing a lot more damage than the other two, and even ends up freezing Eileen a couple times, allowing me to just rattle bullets into her. After some good minutes of damage though, she gets pretty low, so wanting to save her for later, I send in Warset, who for some reason, Eileen just refuses to attack and just stays out aggro onto me instead, which is honestly fine as I've unlocked this secret technique, constant rolling. This lets me avoid her while Warsec just pumps her from the back with attacks. But once she does lock onto him, she rapidly destroys his health, forcing me to send in Mamory. This is actually pretty bad as we might be doing all right damage, but Mamory's is my fifth pal, meaning everyone else on my team is either dead or gravely injured. Mamory's really pulls through though and puts out a good amount of damage, and also his more tanky approach keeps Lylene still, letting me get tons of good headshots on her. However, after taking 
taking a brutal hit, I must retreat to let my shield regen. Which is when Memories gets hit by a hard water type move. Which I didn't realize, but is super effective because grass isn't good against water in this game. Like, I understand things gotta be a little different, but like, th this is too far, man. While they're not fighting, your pals actually regen HP, so Mariah is basically at full now and re-enters the battle. We've got less than half our time left, though, and we're slightly behind where we should be on damage. It's gonna be really close. Just then, a huge attack kills Mariah. So we have to send a Nightwing once again. And I have no idea what got into him sitting in that sphere. But in less than a minute, we do nearly 10 thousand damage together. Ever after his brilliant performance, Nightwing himself dies. Thank you for your sacrifice, Nightwing. Alright, Lorenus, you're gonna have to bring this one home. Time is ticking down, and in order to close the gap, I start playing it risky and go for way more headshots. But this bites me in the butt, as I take massive damage, forcing me to retreat. But I stay persistent, weaving in attacks whenever I can, until there's just 90 seconds left. Oh, crud. Alright, 3,000. Oh, we so got this. Oh god. Everyone's dead. Four sec to get back out there. <gasps> nice. Ooh. Yeah. Heck yeah. Oh my god. And in celebration of our success, I decide to go paragliding off the tower and immediately die because it's too cold. As a victory lap to celebrate our win, I go back and catch myself the Verdash, who will prove very useful later on, and I'm not talking about for a game freak in the lawsuit. I spend the night grinding until I level up, allowing me to build an improved furnace. These let us start smelting refined ingots, which cost two ore, but now also a piece of coal. Refined ingots are going to become the primary resource for the next tier of items we need to craft, so while I've been able to grab a couple here and there, we need to find an efficient and effective way to farm it soon. I start searching around the whole map for them, and along the way I encounter these friendly little guys, and are they piggybacking with each other? That's actually so cute! Well, I guess it's time to shoot them in the face, right? After that, I actually get raided by a swarm of bird Pokemon, and there's this electric bird named Beacon who I really want. But unfortunately, like most raids, my base just goes nuclear on them, and they all get slaughtered before I can catch any. But funnily enough, I continue exploring north and just happen upon an alpha version. Luckily, I had just crafted tons of hyperspheres and easily secure it. And as cool as our current flying pal is, there's only room for one on this team, so it means it's unfortunately time to say goodbye to Nightwing. I'll never forget you. You are the true MVP of this playthrough, Nightwing. Oh my god, this thing is so much faster. What the heck? Holy crap, this is a huge upgrade. Feeling confident with some new team members like Beacon, I decide it's about time to take on that third tower as well. Whoa. Who is this guy? Oh gosh. I really thought he'd be fire type because he's in the fire type area. Oh, that's definitely an electric type. He's got an electric guard jump. I was not expecting that. Oh my god. He killed him in one hit? You're joking! Oh my god, that did bonkers damage. Oh my god, well, this isn't going well. Yeah, there was no way, okay. That one's a bit above my pay grade at the current moment. At least when we lost the Grizzbolt fight, we were making good progress, but couldn't quite close the deal. For Axel, we didn't even survive a full minute. This is where the jump in difficulty in the game becomes insane. Like, this is not even in the same league as Lightning. And believe me when I say it, this will not be the last time we see the defeat screen at the hands of Axel. Oh no, far from it. So with that in mind, it's time to make like some gears and get grinding. My goal is to get us strong enough to be able to capture the pals in the volcano region, as I figure that will give us a huge bolster in power. On the positive side that does mean we get to see tons of new pals like this weird imp thing or oh a fell bat i don't know what that is what the frick that thing is awesome what the hell oh no it's a tumbler sexy man also find some more bee guards in a cave and learn an interesting little fact about them did i just like bounce off of him that was crazy. The outfit at the end of this dungeon is a gobfin, who I absolutely adore his stubby little legs. So I try to catch all his underlings, which leads to... Okay, I gotta go. Come on, dang it. Luckily, a little while later while exploring, I managed to find a whole gang of them. Oh my god, there's so many. Oh my god, they killed the crap out of... Oh my god, they're killing the crap out of me. What the heck, there's so many. What the heck, oh my god. 
Dear Lord. From there, I go and speed run some alpha battles. Like this cracked out Puff the Magic Dragon, the average Shawnee Dew viewer, Ranbu, Quivern, who actually becomes a huge team member later on. They somehow made the ugliest pal uglier. And this guy who looks like the most annoying character from Hunter x Hunter, like, oh my god, I could not stand him. Half the Chimera Ant arc is just him squealing about freaking Meruem. Holy crap. Sorry, I got carried away. I also finally realized the production assembly line 2 error, which allows me to make some big upgrades to my equipment, like crafting a Giga Shield, an upgrade helmet, a better spear, and the single shot assault rifle. I find a good spot to farm sulfur as well, meaning I can make even more bullets. With all that prep work done, plus a ton of grinding for spheres, we're finally able to tackle the volcano. I catch a ton more wicks in for base tasks, and the place is basically swarming with these fire lizards that I can easily catch. But as I go deeper, I start encountering some way more difficult foes. Like this van worm, whose fire hits hard. And this fire tortoise with massive defense. But luckily, after throwing some hyperspheres, I'm able to catch both. But at night, I'm ambushed by four foes, and one of them is stronger than than every other pal we've seen here so far. Two birds in the sky. It's a full moon. Okay, Beacon's taking a beating. Go, Reptyro. Wow, thrilling, thrilling gameplay. This rock versus that rock. <laughs> Dude, Reptyro's putting in the freaking work, man. What the heck? What does a Ragnarok? Oh, come on. Oh my god, that thing is really cool. Oh my god, that thing's really cool. Oh, Farley, now's not the time for you to get up. My dog is getting up. He's sitting on my lap. Harley, why are you standing on my desk? Can't you just... Okay. I want this Ragnarok. I only got nine shots at it. Oh. Okay. Oh my god, he shot through the rock. Okay. Oh my god. Nice. And Pen King ate wheat! And with that, we've actually got our first pal that we're gonna be using until the end of this playthrough, the legendary Ragnahawk. But after catching a couple more beasts, I accidentally come across an incredibly rare pal. Thingalope. Oh, that's the Cobalion thing I wanted this whole time. What type is it? Neutral. Okay. Get him, Beacon. Oh, 4%. I don't feel great. Oh dang it! But other than that small misstep, we've had a super successful trip to the volcano and head home. There, I craft Ragnarok's saddle and decide to give it a try. Woo! That's fast. Oh wait, he doesn't fly? Okay, it doesn't look like he flies, which is kind of strange. Yeah, no matter what I tried, Ragnarok just jumps instead of flies, which I was so perplexed by. I mean, he's a giant bird. What else would he do? My sure trip back has me grow to level 38, but completely drains me of my balls, which means we gotta make like a Republican who just accidentally walked in to call me by your name and head straight to church. Did you know that as of today, the Catholic Church has officially been around for 216,000 years? If you're interested, just Google Catholic Church 216,000 using that ore to make some balls and bullets, and combined with our new team members, I think we're ready to try the boss again. But most importantly, we picked up Repyro, who is a strong level 37 ground type, and I believe that he'll be the champion of this fight. Uh, go. Uh, I think I'm in the bad zone. Okay, yeah, I was in the bad zone. Okay, I just took so much damage, my god. I just took an insane amount of damage. What are you doing, Reptyro? You're so slow! <laughs> Get in here! I'm supposed to be the one who's hiding in a corner. Dude, this is brutal. Okay, Reptyro, you are not making it work, really. I mean, you're doing okay damage, but you're just too slow, man. You're like all the way over there. R Repti oh, crap. Reptyro, you're supposed to be the savior of this, of this fight. All right, let's try that again. Okay, can't really tell this is going. Not well. Nice work, Reptyro. Oh, and I hit him for 400 damage. And then he nearly killed me. Oh my god! Yo, the grappling hook is cracked. Okay, I'm gonna just stay over here. I'm just focused on di dodging. Reptyro, you're taking a lot of damage. Get back! Go! Lorianus! Go! And that hurt a lot. We've done 10,000 damage. We need to double that and give it to the next person. Oh my god, how did he still catch me? I grappled halfway across the map. Oh my god, he eviscerated me in three seconds. Jesus Christ. 
Oh yeah, I need to be way higher level for this. The main thing we'll need for our next power jump, like I said before, is refined ingots. But unfortunately, I still haven't found a good place for farming coal. So I do what I probably should have done 15 hours ago and just bing it. Apparently, there is a smaller desert around the center of the world where all of the enemies are like half the level as the desert that we've been to. This is also great because it's a completely unexplored area thus far, meaning there are tons of new low-level Pokemon to grind catch EXP off of. First up is Diggs Toys, which I don't even have a jug for. This is just a cool freaking design. I just really like his Oh my god, what is he doing? Then we got some hang yous, you guys, and the kamikaze birds are also way more common here. As I previously can only find them in eggs or alpha. Also find here that Ragnarok can fly, I guess. She just needs to do like a little hop and then elevate during the hop. I have no clue why hers works differently than every other flying Pokemon in this game. But irregardless, he is by far the fastest flyer I have and makes getting around 10 times easier. And after venturing far enough into the desert, I finally find tons of coal rocks. The only unfortunate thing is that there's no fast travel points, so coming here is kind of a pain in the butt. But going even deeper, despite everything in this area being like level 15, for some reason I find a level 47 alpha just roaming around. But despite knowing that I don't even stand a chance against this thing, for some reason I decide to engage. Okay, we are doing literally nothing to this guy. Oh my god, you killed my guy in one hit. Okay, we gotta get out of here. Yeah, no way. No how, no way. So we'll have to come back for that much later on. But with all the coal we just gathered, we just need a quick trip to the merchant. Oh, crap, crap, crap. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, crap. Stop. And after dealing with that, we get to head back to the base. More raids? Oh, my God. <gasps> my, my, my everything's on fire. I wasn't expecting this. Uh, how did I put it out? I get it. Yeah, Pain King. Oh, my God, Pain King. You're actually doing great. I can't believe nothing really burned up. That was nice luck. And after dealing with that, we can smelt a bunch of refined ingots. But now the stomp up becomes ore instead of coal, and I am sick and tired of constantly going to this church. With how much I'm coming here, I feel like I'm about to put out a terrible rap album. Hot damn hot water. A Jesus, Jesus, wife, wife. So I actually thought of a brilliant idea that should solve our ore problem. And by thought of an idea, I mean still from a Reddit post. You see, this whole time I've been operating out of a single base, but you're technically allowed to have three different bases, each with 15 working pounds. So I go to this flat area I found with eight respawnable ore nodes. From here, I built a satellite base entirely focused around gathering these ores. I built out some extremely basic resources like campfires, beds, and berry farms. From here, I just put a bunch of pals that are good at mining, like Diggs, Toys, and the Mud Puppies. And just like that, the Pokemon base tier will dig out these ore nodes every single time they respawn, giving me tons of free ore anytime I come back here. This is probably the single most helpful thing I do to speed up grinding this entire playthrough. Like, seriously, if you're playing along, do this right now. Being able to have what's essentially limitless ore being mined while I AFK massively increases the speed at which I can make weapons, pal spheres, and just progress in general. In fact, it's so helpful that I decided to set up a third base in the low-level desert for coal mining as well, letting me produce as many refined ingots as I could ever possibly want. And while we're doing base improvements, I designed to finally upgrade the storage system at my main base. I've been using the basic chest with like eight slots for the last 40 hours, and I think half of my playtime was just spent trying to organize them. Having these far more spaces chests ends up doing leagues for my sanity. At first, I tried manually transporting every item from the old chest to the new one, but eventually, I got impatient and just deconstructed all my chests and let my Pokemon figure it out. All the new ingots were pulling in allowed me to craft a new weapon in the double barrel shotgun. And after a ton more catch grinding in the desert and volcano and making an upgraded set of armor too, it's time to try the boss once again. Who are we gonna wanna use the most of? I have a good feeling about Verdash. I don't know. I, have a, I just have a good feeling about her. Dude, Verdash already took so much damage. Back, get out of there. Oh, that hurt. Okay, Verdash, you're putting in the work. Oh, okay. God, man. Get freaking God. Okay, I feel a lot better about this attempt. We're doing good. That was great. Great freeze. Okay, you're doing good, but you're just not doing that much damage, man. Oh, and she's dead. We're doing survival. We're just not doing enough damage. Oh, Ragnarok is putting in work. Okay, we're, I don't think we're going to get him this time, but we we stand a chance now. Okay, I'm actually going to take my armor off and just die. 
Let's try just bringing our best pets. And so I try running it back with just all my highest level pals, but once again, while we're able to survive his attacks, we're not doing nearly enough damage to finish this in the 10 minutes you're allotted. I mean, it's halfway over and we've barely gone through a third of the way there. All that time spent grinding and gearing up and still we're not even close. This was the point that I started to get pretty demoralized, thinking there was absolutely no way this could be done in a reasonable amount of time. I mean, this was only the third boss. I was level 40 and I had been playing for over 37 hours at this point. So I wasn't sure how I was ever going to get past this. So I decided it was about time to do the same thing Mormon couples do when they want their own TLC show. Copious amounts of breeding. Yes, see, I haven't really touched on this yet, but you can actually make your own eggs by breeding male and female versions of a Pokemon. And the target for a breed of Palooza was none other than Verda. after her performance on Ghost Team in the Elite Four. So I strove to build the perfect Verda. The way breeding works in this game is actually pretty simple, but surprisingly fun. You have to build a breeding farm and then just put a cake in a box for them to eat. Cake can be easily cooked using Using flour and berries, which I have a ton of. Milk and eggs, which can be bought from the merchant, and honey that I can go easily farm. Then you just stick the Pokemon in there, and bam, they start making an egg. Now you're probably thinking I'm gonna do a bunch of breeding of Verdash together until I can pass down all these traits and give them super optimal stats, and then train up that new baby all the way to become an ultra Pokemon, right? Well, you'd be wrong, because leveling pals in this game actually takes a massively long time, as they don't get the EXP bonus that we do from catching unique pals. So while training a pal all the way up from level one would be optimal, by the time I was done grinding, to a reasonable level, Dexerto would have already tweeted out my death. No. Instead, I intend to make my most cruel invention yet. The Child Chewer. Yes, I will have Verdi the Verdash breed countless eggs, birthing a whole family around her. And then, once she refuses to birth us anymore, I will make her consume all of her children to become stronger. And then, the cycle repeats. Verdi relegated to an imprisonment of forever eating her own babies. But once I'm done with that, you're far from finished, Verdi. As now, I will fan you up with the souls of every Every single pal I found on this journey. You must bear this burden for the rest of your life. You know, I think Peter was right. This is the devil's game. These boosts buff my Verdi to be nearly 40% stronger and 90% more traumatized. Now, with all that done, combined with a few more hours of grinding, it was time to take on the boss once again. Uh, yo! Yo! Okay, and that still somehow was not enough. I decided to make my goal this time to try and get to level 42, as that's when you unlock the upgraded shotgun. So you know what that means. Is this an alpha male TikTok? Because I am sensing a lot of rising and a whole lot of grinding in our future. I decided to explore the backside of the volcano this time, where I find this lizard who looks like he says females, the fire version of my sworn nemesis, and... What the heck is that? Please help. Who I thankfully am able to catch. But as I stumble into the furthest edge of the volcano, I start to encounter tons of rare and strong pals. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay for now. Um, oh god, I ran out of stamina. That thing is cool as hell. My current strategy is to grind my catching during the day, and then at night look for leaf monk statues as they're much easier to see then. Hey guys, post commentary Sean here. I actually ended up getting a lot of leaf monk statues throughout this run, and I've only realized now, like a couple of days after writing this script, that there's actually a glitch in the game that when you redeem leaf monk statues, it actually makes your capture rate worse. Like, so it does literally the opposite of what's intended to do. Early access! The following morning, I happened upon Kobalion, who I've been trying to catch for eons because he looks so cool and thankfully this time it works what the frick is that bushy oh my god are they gonna kiss unfortunately though verdi's feelings of passion or maybe just anger towards me for the whole child eating thing shine through and she kills the bushy on getting home i've also now collected enough ragnahawks to upgrade my own's ability to the next level which should make getting around on her even faster after training verdi on a couple more rare alphas i decided to try my hand at grabbing anubis once again as his ground type attacks would be extremely helpful against the electric type boss we've been trying to take down and it actually starts off going surprisingly well don't take any brutal hits oh we trapped him Okay, where, where did he go? Huh? Oh, oh my god! Is he just stuck? Um, mm, all right then. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Is he gonna hurt me? <laughs> hey, get him through. Oh, I think that. Okay. 
We're tracking him down pretty good until Verdi gets too low, and I have to send in everyone else. It's safe to say they are not nearly as strong as Verdi and almost all die instantly. The only one who kind of serves as memories, and that's just because he quad resists Anubis's attack. I get distracted by Syndicate Guard though, and while trying to get him off the battlefield, I misjudge which way Anubis's attack is coming from and take massive damage. I fall back a bit to heal up, but just as my shield is coming back up, Anubis comes out of nowhere and hits me for absurd damage. But just when I start to heal again, Anubis uses the attack that makes this battle so dang hard. Oh, dang it, we were so freaking close. Well, you know what? I get to level 42 and get the pump action shotgun to go right back into the Axel fight because who even needs Anubis? All right, and there I go. Okay, so we need Anubis. I head back into the fight and having the better shotgun this time means we get to do way more damage. Not to mention, is he... I'm gonna take this as a sign. The fact that it happened twice. I'm just gonna take this as a sign and just do as God intended. This is gonna take a while, isn't it? Alright, gotta let my stamina get back up. This is taking so long. Oh my god. Oh no! It didn't work forever! Well, at least Verde healed back up. How could it hit me from all the way over there? I think we might actually get this. Now, if we can actually catch him, that's a different question. Oh crap, I forgot about this deck. Wait, did, I thought he was supposed to like come towards me like really fast. I think he's stuck on the tree. <laughs> get him, get him! <laughs> oh great, he was- <laughs> Come on! Okay, now he's on top of a tree. Christ on a bike. <gasps> oh, dang it, I thought we had it. Okay. <gasps> oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Suck on that, you turd. 655. Oh my god. Those attacks are freaking insane. What the hell? After catching that Anubis, I actually go back for a second. And now that I know how to dodge all his attacks, the fight goes much smoother. And I actually catch him on the very first ball. And with both Anubi on our team, I go into the fight with Axel for hopefully the last time. Please. Screw you. Sick him, boy! Oh, come on! Oh, you took a lot of damage there. That was not good. I should have recalled you. Alright, let's see how Anubis does. Bro, I'm doing good damage. Bro, are you gonna attack him? What are you doing? You're sitting there sauntering. Bro is sauntering. Okay, he just did 2,000 damage. I guess I should shut my pie hole. Okay, he just did 4,000 damage. That seems pretty good. Oh, crud. I just took so much damage. Come on! You got this! Please! Come on, we're doing good. We're doing really good. We just gotta do enough damage now. Come on. I think I gotta do more shotgun damage. Oh my god, guns do so much damage if you use them right. Jesus. That's the real secret. Okay, we're doing good. Oh, come on. What the? What? No, 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 no. Not like this, not like this, not like this. Come on, we're so close. Not like this, no. Holy crap. That attack did so much freaking damage. Go in. Go, Verde. Come on, Verde. Where are you? We need you. Oh my god, I should have reloaded. Holy crap. <gasps> yes! Get wrecked! Get freaking wrecked! Holy crap, I hate you. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I hate you, 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 die, die, perish, die, I hate you. The next boss is a fire type though, and in hindsight, probably wasn't the best idea to put every single pal soul I had into the grass type who's gonna be completely useless here. But irregardless, I was feeling hyped coming off the last battle. So you know what? I decide to dive straight into it. Money. Can you tell the 60 hours of pal world in four days that it started to melt my brain yet? Two can play this game. Okay, that didn't do any damage at all. And I already took so much damage that I lost my shield. Ragnarok doesn't do the best, so I decide to send in Anubis instead. And surely Anubis, at level 47 out of 50, will be able to make some waves here. 
Oh my god, Anubis just got shredded. We get to the halfway mark of the fight, and we have barely even done 20,000 damage, and soon after that, I die. Except that I'm gonna have to make a completely new team for this fight, which is gonna take forever. So I decided to try and build out a team that could beat both of the remaining towers, saving me for grinding out two separate teams. I do some investigating to the last tower and discover he's a dark type named Shadow Beast. Since water beats fire and dragon beats dark, in order to have the most optimal team for both fights, we need a water dragon Pokemon. In Power World, there are exactly four water dragon Pokemon. But the first three are pretty low level and kind of suck, so I opt to go with the last one, Jormantude. Jormantude is one of the last Pokemon in the entire Pokedex, with his number being even after Anubis's, and an alpha version spawns at level 45 in the overworld. With Gyarados being so close to the max level, I figure he should be able to carry us in the Fire Tower, and with the right preparation in the final boss battle as well. But before we do all that, we gotta catch the damn thing. And I wish I could play you some live commentary during the fight here, but I think the concept of having to build another team fundamentally broke me, so I barely say a single word the entire rest of this recording session. Oh, damn it! Except right there. I'm gonna freak. And right there. On the third attempt, though, I actually managed to catch it on my very first ball. From there, I go and catch two more of them. And let me just say, I haven't seen snakes fighting like this since I spent the night at your dad's. Before we go all in on this and start training everybody up, let us give Jormin 2 to try in the fire trial because i am a little afraid that he's too big to fail like the housing market in 2008 if he is too big then that's gonna be an issue you know what i mean so let's just figure it out now if not we'll breed for german dudes okay german two doing good damage so far no if anything i feel like being big is like helping it he says be careful of the electric type moves it should have been two minutes. We've done around like 20k or so. 20 times five is a uh, is a hundred. So that's leaving us significantly behind. But during the fight, I make a pretty huge revelation. You see, while my initial plan was to fill my part with five German tides, that way when one dies, I could just send out the next one, I realized that survivability wasn't really my problem. It was DPS. So I come up with a plan, and it all revolves around my secret weapon and savior of the next fight, Kelpsy. But more on him later. For now, I accept the hard truth that if I want to beat this guy, I'm going to have to get to level 46 and unlock the assault rifle and the next level of armor. Which is by no means an easy feat, as the experience required for each level is now in the millions. So I go ahead and continue filling out my Pokedex. Head back to the desert, to the volcano, and I even venture into my true nemesis's realm, the snowy mountains. And after lots and lots of grinding, I managed to hit level 46. And to make all my equipment requires tons of resources. And the biggest one holding me back is high quality pal oil, as you need it to make polymer. As unlike Orin Coal, there's absolutely no way to automate this. The only thing you can do is either kill mammoths or buy it. And whoa boy, is it expensive. While I'm sure there are tons of guys now on easy infinite money in pal world. You have to remember, I was playing this like five days after release, so no one really knew about about all these exploits yet. I was kind of on my own about these things. Combining that polymer with that pure quartz we got from all the way in the beginning of this playthrough allows us to make circuit boards. These are required to make a lot of the end game processing items, and in this case, the electric furnace. The electric furnace is not only more efficient than a regular furnace, but also allows us to craft the final type of ingot in the game, pal ingots, requiring a whopping four ore and two palladium fragments. But we only need 40 ingots for now, so it's really no problem to make them. Now, for some reason, we need to make over 2,000 of them for whatever reason that I can't think of, then that would probably be an issue. But with all 40 pal ingots I'll ever need, for sure definitely, brewing, it was time to reveal my secret weapon, Kelpsy. Kelpsy is an early game water Pokemon, and isn't really significant in any way, actually. By the time you can access it, you usually have much better water Pokemon, except for its ability. While in team, increases attack power of all water pals. That's right, for just being in the team, Kelpsy will increase the attack of all my Jormantudes. So I then go to the small beach alcove where Kelpsy spawns in droves and catch tens upon tens of them. And after catching 40, it's time to condense them all into two Kelpsies, getting both of their abilities to level 3. Alright, the preparations have been made. Let's get the squad that we're running with into the fray. We've got Jordy, Monday, Tittles, then we've got Ditsy and Bongo's level 3 Aqua Spout. Watch this. 669 attack. Okay, let's see what happens when we put Ditsy on the team. 744! 820! That is absurd. That's actually absurd. Now we've got the Pow Metal Armor, the Pow Metal Helm, and the Assault Rifle, and I guess my sword as well. Yeah, we know your deal, man. Okay, go, Jordy! Dude, this armor looks sick, not even gonna lie. Okay, he already took down my shield. Why did I do, like, no damage to him? 
Oh no, that's doing like. Go go! go. Oh. Did I get him back in time? I hope so. It's doing like 2,000 per per clip or whatever it's called. Most critical. Please don't. Please don't come for me. After my misquote. They're mags, not clips, Johnny Do. I'm playing like butt. Okay, we've only done 3,000 HP. Oh, that's because my think my guys are my. <laughs> he was still on a uh, don't attack. Oh crap. Oh, I'm all tapping. Oh crap. Okay. All right. This is a bit of a scuff start. It was a bit. A bit is an understatement here. I think. Oh my god, he just did absurd damage. What? Why are you? are like doing nothing, man. Why aren't you attacking? You're stuck in the freaking wall. Ah, oh, crap. These guys might be too big. Dude. What the heck? This is going... Okay, we gotta just start over. I'm just gonna kill myself. Okay. Alright. Some... What, what went wrong? We did worse than when we had stinking Lucario out there. I kind of thought that was gonna be a cakewalk, man. I realized there was two things I failed to do in that fight. Firstly, I cooked up some food buffs that gave everyone a 10% increase to their attack. Additionally, I hadn't used my Jormantudes in my grinding at all. Since they're so large, it was a pain to use them, so I hadn't ever edited their moveset. In their current form, they only had moves that had long cooldown timers like 60 to 90 seconds, meaning most of the time my Gyaradoses were doing nothing. So I swapped their moves to give them a rapid use water move and I re-enter the fight. Oh, here we go. Now this is what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what I was expecting. Oh, shoot. My shield. Shield's down. Oh, and he's hitting me from the behind. That's what my ex-wife said before she left me. It was a guy from work. Allegedly. Oh, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Get back. Dorty. You got this. You're the chosen one. Yes, hit him with your hydro laser. That did bonkers damage. Oh my god, these shorter- Oh, Jordy's dead! Crud. Okay. Yes, hit him with your hydro laser. Nice. Oh, my shield! Oh, my shield is down. Get back! Get in there, Tittles! Oh, Tittles, you just took a massive hit. Oh my god, I have to re reload every five freaking seconds. And I'm hot! And I'm hot! I'm hot! I'm hot! Okay, we're on good pace. I just gotta survive. Tittles! No! Oh, Nards. <laughs> Oh, Monday, it's just me and you. Yes, hit him with your laser. No, Monday! No, 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 get back, get back! Oh, I clicked the wrong button! Oh, thank God. Come on, Monday! We got this! Monday, no! God dang it. Oh, God. Can I do this by myself? Alright, Bongos, you get out there. Distract him! Bongos, what are you doing? You failed out there. Yeah, we just did, like, what, 10k? Oh, no way, no way. It's over. Oh my god, it's so- we're so back. We just don't have the ammo. Take me now. Dude, a thousand bullets. God dang it, man. We were really close, though. And worse than my honor was the over 700 bullets I wasted here. But we were so close. And I think that if I just recalled my dragons more often, they would stay healthier for longer and we could win. So I decided to try it one last time. But first, we gotta do hours of bullet generation simulator. And after getting tons of charcoal, sulfur, and refined ore, and leaving my computer on to AFK overnight, it's time to try again. Get in there, Jordy. We got it this time. I didn't reload before entering. Jordy has already taken half of his health. Jesus Christ. We can't lose Jordy. Okay, we're doing good damage. We've done 20k in two minutes. We gotta get our stamina back. Come on! Okay, Tiddles! Yes, hit him with the cannon! You completely missed! Tiddles, you're a complete disappointment, and you let me get hit? Alright, we gotta get Jordy back in there. The strong will survive, and Jordy will thrive. Tiddles, get back. Tiddles, get back again. Oh no! That did the low. Oh lordy! Oh my shield, my shield, oh my shield, my neck, my back, and don't even ask about my rack. Piddles is down. Monday, bring us home. Wh wh where'd you go, Monday? I gotta give us everything I got. Who cares? Hit Jordy all you want. You'll never get me. Oh, he hit me. Jordy, no! Monday, bring us home. Just 20,000 more. Come on. No. It's okay. Oh, we're so close. We're so freaking close. What the heck? Just nail a couple hydro cannons. Come on. Come on. Uh, no. Monday, we can't lose you now. Okay. Go. 45 seconds. Reload. 5,000 more HP. 
30 seconds. Monday's dead. It's all on me. Yes. Oh my God. Holy crap. Everyone was dead. It was literally just me and vibes. Oh my God. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and I'm cold. Yes! And with that, after far too many attempts, we had beaten the second to last boss in the game. Now, only one challenge lied in front of us. In order to prepare, I tried to gather up some PAL souls in order to power up the Jormi game. I read an article that said elite Pokemon sometimes drop medium PAL souls, and I can confidently say it must have been one of those AI-generated game rant articles, because that could not have been less true. I ended up having much better luck by just opening chests in the desert, as many of them contain small and medium PAL souls. I invest them all into Jordy, and with that, Team Jormantude is ready to take on the game's final boss. You don't stand a chance against me, Mr. Gojo. I know what happens at the end of the sh- Victor, baby. You're going down. Okay, here- Oh my god, Jordy already took so much freaking damage. Oh my god, I just got shredded. Oh my god, my assault rifle's doing nothing to him! We've done 20,000 damage in two minutes. Which means we're on track to do like 100k. Which is half of where we- Oh, and Tiddles is dead! Yeah, we weren't even close. Like, not even half the way there. Despite all of the power we have at our disposal- Now keep in mind, when I was attempting this, there was literally one single video on all of YouTube of someone doing this fight. Because most people are normal and hadn't clocked 60 hours in 5 days. And even the guy who was doing it was doing it on easy mode. By using the sparse information from there, and from a Reddit comment 50 parent comments in, I devised a two-part plan to get us back on track. And the first one is obvious. We're gonna have to grind for the rocket launcher. The strongest weapon in the game, which despite only being three levels higher, was far off than the chances of your mother being proud at you, sitting at six million EXP away. And after having a vast majority of the Pokemon in this game in every region, our options were looking pretty slim. This is where the first tool we're using will come into play, the Wildlife Sanctuary. The Wildlife Sanctuaries are several animal preserves hidden far out in the corners of the map, all the way across the sea. Here hide some rare alternate versions of Pokemon like this Earth version of the deer and this Fire Dormy, but also some rare Pokemon like Primarina, Fart Horse, and even Boss Pal. Only problem is that just like millennials watching a movie or boomers after their daughter makes them get a dog, the police care way more about the animals than humans, so if you even take a step on the ground here, they start shooting you. Thankfully, this can be alleviated with a flying Pokemon. But that's not the only reason we're here. You see, there are also these red flowers all around the sanctuary, which is good because we need lots of them, like 100 of them. I'll explain why we need them a little bit later, but just for now, know that we do. To further my pal deck and experience, I also attempt to catch Jet Rag. And that goes, um, well, yeah, he killed my entire team before I even did 10 percent of his health. So yeah, safe to say we won't be coming back here anytime soon. But eventually I hit level 49 and can start working towards the rocket launcher, which cost a whopping 75 pal ingots and 30 polymer. And on top of that, each individual rocket costs one ingot and five gunpowder. And on top of that, we need to make new assembly lines to be able to craft this damn gun. And getting all the resources necessary for this took me longer than it took your English teacher to realize you're a lost cause, giving up on you, which caused you to flunk out of high school, and because of that you still say words like irregardless, god damn it, Miss Christian. Irregardless, this grind takes a while, like holy crap, hours upon hours. No exaggeration, one third of my total playtime in Power World is the time between the previous and final boss, a full 30 hours. Now some of that time was AFKing while my Anubis rapidly crafted cement, but even though the list of material required is small, most of those items take a bunch of other items to make, like stone, sulfur, pal fragments, pal oil, charcoal, carbon fiber, tons of things that can't really be automated and require me to actively collect on a cycle. To try and make the smelting process go quicker, I give this potion called Strange Juice to Ragnarok, as it's supposed to, like, double her efficiency and, well, safe to say something got doubled here. But after a few hours, I get around 80 rockets, which I figure is enough, and then there's just one thing left to do. So remember the flowers from earlier? Yeah, they can actually be crafted into a potion that allows you to reset all of your stat investments. So by drinking it, you get all of your level points back, free to spend them however you wish. I chose to put everything into HP and attack. Previously, I had put zero points into attack, but I figure we're gonna want to do as much damage as possible here. Apparently, this potion was also bugged in this patch, and you could lose all of your stat points and just not get them back, but thankfully, that did not happen to me. And just like that, we're ready for the final fight. And excuse my low volume in this next clip, I really wanted to get this done tonight, so I recorded this at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's really weird not having any stamina now. That felt good. Clean 2k damage, that felt pretty good. Oh, eat that. You can't tell for on pace. Oh, that didn't feel good, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like we're doing worse than the assault rifle round. 
Am I crazy? I feel like we're doing no damage. Oh god, that hurt like heck. Bro. Well, I don't even under- How could I ever do this? And Jordy's freaking dead. Alright, maybe let's just go in with our best guys instead. Let's see if we can make it work with this squad. We seem to be doing a little better this time. Oh, Anubis is dead? Oh, wow. Okay. I don't even under- I don't know how this could even ever be possible. How even? Well, I'm dead. I'm dead. What the- f Let's try the squad one more time. I'd be remiss to not try it one last time. I gotta just try it again. This has got to be it. I don't know what I'm gonna do if not. Attempt after attempt goes by and I just cannot succeed. Even though the past hours of gameplay have been building to this moment, the fact that I built my entire team around being able to use it in this final fight, it all wasn't enough. At this point, I was frustrated and annoyed. I had been working on this video for eight days, 14 to 16 hour days, and knowing that I had a sponsor deadline in the back of my head, every second I couldn't succeed was just stressing me out. And at my lowest, I decided to just load into the battle on easy mode. I mean, how many people would even notice? Only 30% of people even make it this far into the video. Just do it. Give in and cheat. It's the only way to get the video out on time, Shawnee. As I loaded into the options menu, something occurred to me though. Was this really who I was? Was this really how I wanted to succeed? By cheating? No. This is not what my people would want. I was born inside a Donkey Kong machine. My first word was Glover. I swallowed a Wii remote once. I am a gamer. And without honor, what's a gamer? Just a neurodivergent man who's not quite sure what deodorant is. So unlike my seven-year-old ex-wife, I refused to cheat. And instead, it was time to start training up a new team, and it all started with Jet Ragon. Jet Ragon is one of the few legendary pals in this game, and as we saw before, he is tough. But I made it my goal to not just catch two, not even three, but five Jet Dragons to serve as my team. Their legendary strength and type advantage undoubtedly letting me finally best Shadow Beat. But catching just one Jet Dragon is easier said than done, as this battle is nails hard, like almost on the same level as Shadow Beat. Fortunately, unlike Shadow Beat, there's no timer, so we can take it a little slower. One huge problem immediately starts arising though. I have to use the rocket launcher to even stand a chance in this fight. Whenever I do, it'll blow up stones that I then auto pick up. And since I took all my stats out of weight, they immediately prevent me from moving and I take huge damage. And ultimately, why am I holding? What am I? Oh, I blew up a rock. Oh my God. I blew up a rock. I only did 114 damage. Jesus. I'm dead? So I try it again. Go, we're stuck in the freaking wall. Are you joking, man? Oh, great. And we fell through the world. Or no, we're still, I can't even see. Oh my God, this is not the time for this to freaking happen. Oh my God, I'm actually really tilted. I'm gonna have to bleep all that, but I'm actually so tilted. Oh my God, that is, I was doing so well. And then just the end of this game is frustrating me to no end. Jesus Christ, dude, this is just ridiculous. So after like 10 minutes of me whining, this time I don't even mess around to the ground. I just stay up on Ragnarok and fire away at him until he's weak. I have to use way more rockets this way, but the lack of stamina and weight just makes this fight so much harder. I've also crafted 43 of the highest tier Pokeballs in the game, Legendary Sphere. And even at just 100 health, it's still a 2% capture rate. So I go through nearly 30 balls before okay there we go bro how is that 1.1 percent and i am glad i decided to make that plunge because without any investment he nearly sits at 900 attack over the next few days i make 100 rockets her jet dragon fight. So 500 rockets and so many legendary spheres later, I have a full team of jet dragons ready. Making all of those rockets actually took so long that every single one of my workers is depressed or injured. So I have to go out and catch an entire new workforce, which I guess technically is the definition of scabbing. But what did you think I was going to like heal them? Oh no, there's no workers comp for you, Penking. You're going straight to hell. During my FK rocket generation, I also started checking up this area in the north part of the map as it has several higher tier chests for us to look at. My goal is to get more pal souls, but I have 
eventually get a blueprint for our rocket launcher one. I've been getting these the whole game, but just throwing them out. They say they're supposed to just let you craft something while you have it in your inventory, but like, I already know how to craft a rocket launcher. Turns out, I'm an idiot, and that's not what this does at all. Instead, the rocket launcher one is an upgraded version of the rocket launcher that does 1,000 extra damage. Which, of course, I want to make, but it costs double the materials with a normal rocket launcher. Jesus. Because of this, I fill my base with electric furnaces to try and smelt all the bars I end up needing, which is a lot. The amount of pal fragments I need becomes too much, so I end up putting a stone farm in my ore mining base, because we have more than enough ore for, like, four playthroughs. I then convert this all into pal fragments. I started doing this way too late into my AFK grind, but c'est la vie. With those being produced, I start powering up my Jet Dragon squad with pal souls, only to realize I don't have nearly enough. However, you can actually get the souls back from pals you already invested in. However, it is so expensive. Like, look at that, 92,000! But I look online and learn that nails, which can be made from one ingot, sell for tons of money. And since we have so much ore, we can make heaps of nails, and then sell them all to the merchant, and reset some of the old pals we had invested in, like Ragnarok, Jordy, and Verdi. Then we use all the souls from across all of our jet dragons to get an extra 30% to all of their stats. Well, except for for gore, because, uh, well, yeah. And with that all done, and 200 rockets made, it was finally time. Pal metal armor on. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I know your deal, bro. Oh, okay. That did good damage. Jetty's doing good damage in there. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. That did so much damage. Oh, okay. Oh my god. We're doing it. Okay, we did 10k in like 20 seconds. Jetty, we gotta watch out for your health. But Jetty is getting in there, man. He's a monster. Oh, Jetty got frozen. That's okay. He didn't seem to take advantage of that opportunity at all. I'm about to get frozen. I'm frozen. Jetty, save me. Okay, we've already done a quarter of his HP. We gotta survive. We gotta survive to win. Remember that. Come on. Eat this. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is my perfect victory. Oh, I took so much health, uh, uh, damage. Okay, we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. Okay, we can't die here. We can't die here. Just focus on not dying. Okay, come on. We gotta dodge this. I don't know what he's gonna do when I'm scared. Just run. Just run. Just run. We do have a rocket if we need. Jetty, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's attacking. Yes. Shrug off those hits. Shrug them off. Take this! Jetty's in danger. Okay. We should watch out. I still want to let him get his licks in. Because he's doing really well. I thought we were, like, killing it. We're still, like, kind of just, like, on pace. Uh-oh. Oh, my shield. And I hit the wall. I'm just leaving Jetty in until he dies. Oh, no! I'm gonna die! Crap! And I can't see anything. Okay, just keep running. We gotta weave. Weave him. Now that our shield's up, I can play a little bit more aggressively. Come on. I don't even want to say anything. I'm, like, just too nervous. Oh, no! 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 Okay. We dodged, rolled out of it. Hit him in the face. Thank you very much. Come on, Jetty. Just keep it up. Keep it up, buddy. Just me and you to the end. <gasps> what the heck is that? I don't know. It doesn't look good, though. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. Okay, thought that might work. <gasps> Come on. Boom! Yes! 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 Yes, yeah. Eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Yes! I've unlocked all the achievements! Yes! And that is Pal World 100% cleared. I definitely went overboard with the grinding at the end, but I was so tired of losing to that guy, so I do not regret it at all. And now, it's time to make like my Pokemon and get some freaking rest. And that was Pal World. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I had a lot of fun recording this. Pal World was actually a ton of fun to play. And uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next 100%, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video.